Hey guys, Frank Thomas here. YouBoughtJunkie.com www.YouBoughtJunkie.com I uh, want to show you something quick today and it's regarding having your the ability to create large bots that will perform many different functions but what you do is you actually split them up. I've had a lot of people uh, ask me, I mean a lot of people ask me how to get uh, you know some really complicated box running well and making it simple to fix, simple to test, simple to keep updated in the future and really and truthfully I've only found one way to do it and that is to actually split the bots up into multiple different sections or robots okay for example here you see that I've created a uh, a main robot file and a go to Google robot file here let me just show those right now <coughs> okay so this is the go to Google subroutine now it's a pretty basic uh, pretty basic uh, program here what it basically is doing is it's showing me the uh, giving me the ability to input a variable that the uh, subroutine here is going to require you see it needs the parameter of keywords and it also displays back some information too because I'm just being lazy and it, this tutorial is really not a tutorial on how to scrape a page but really how, how to split your program up I'm just going to display the with this U, uh, user interface stat monitor right here um, the results, the keyword that's actually put in. Okay, the whole idea here is you can see that you can actually input variables that your subroutine is going to need, and output variables that the subroutine is going to send back, either through the file form of a file, a list, uh, a variable or variables or whatever. Okay, so this way you can actually monitor your input and output of the subroutine that you're going to be using later in your main program. So here I've created a subroutine. It's very simple. It takes in the parameter of keywords. It navigates to Google. It fill, fills in the uh, the the, um, the query box. Hits the button and waits for it to finish. And that is it. That's what it sends back. Okay. Actually, just to mimic um, uh, mimic the structure of a return variable here. Let's just put a return in here. I'm going to say return. Um, uh, sub successful. Okay. Now I'll have to just modify this here. I'm going to just do a refresh so it captures that change. I'm going to delete this here and I'm going to reinsert that. So run sub. Okay. Uh, go to Google and I'm going to tell it to insert um, variable which is keyword okay okay now I remember what I did wrong there set sorry okay set return value to insert um, so for some reason I'm just not seeing what I'm looking for here oh return value okay so I'm going to say okay. So now I'm going to take this and I'm going to grab this here command and I'm just going to pull it down here. Okay, I'm going to continue pulling it down. Okay. And I'm going to put my run sub in here. Or I'm going to and then I'm going to just get rid of that. So what's going to happen here is is uh and I'm just going to change the stat monitor here. I'm going to remove that. And I am going to say uh, return value insert insert variable return variable. Okay. 
So I'm going to set that initially to, I'm going to set that variable right up front so you can see the change. Return value, not run. Okay. So I'm going to do a refresh here. Uh, again, I want you to be able to see that change occurring, so I'm going to put, put, put a quick pause in here. Okay, so let's just run the script quickly. As you can see, the return value is not run yet. Okay, and after I hit enter, it should go to Google. I've not put anything in here, so it's just going to continue on with nothing in there. And it's going to say sub successful. Okay, so let me put something in there so you can actually see it running. Test one, two, three. Okay, okay, not run. Once the subroutine is completed, sub successful. So you can see how within a program, within a particular UBOT program, how we can actually sh watch. Uh, variables going in, variables coming back out of a subroutine. Now this is a very, very simplistic uh, representation of what you'd find in something like um, like Visual Studio where you can watch your variables. Now this is very important when you're testing and troubleshooting and it's very handy. Now the nice thing about this is all of our testing actually occurs outside of our subroutine. Okay? Outside of our subroutine. So right now the subroutine is just accepting a variable and it's spitting back a variable. Okay. Now I can decide to capture that variable at the end or not. Now let's see, I've got another one here which is the uh, the main program. It's calling the uh, go to robot here. Let me just make sure that I save this. File, save. Okay. Okay, so let's just give it a try here. Now the main program, what it's doing is it's basically setting the keyword. So you see, we're using it in a totally different way. There's nothing in the user interface here at all. Okay, it's setting the variable. It includes that particular file and it runs a sub and sends the keyword variable to the other one. Now, one thing you need to remember is when you are calling a subroutine from another robot, you have to pass variables to it even though you can set up a global variable and if you know what global variables are basically a global variable is accessible all through the whole program within subroutines within the main structure of the program etc but the minute you pop over to another robot that global variable is lost so if you want to pass a variable to a subroutine you must pass it with the parameter and allow it like right here oh, I'll show you right here so here's the parameter key, putting in the keywords. Now this keywords value here, this keywords value here are two different variables, but we're passing one keywords value to the other, so they're going to be set to the same thing. So let's run it and see what happens here. I'm going to says it's already set. I'm going to change this to uh, just to see that it's running here. Mm -hmm.